Yo, to prepare for this interview we have coming up, the mm-hmm. owner of Pornhub, mm-hmm. I uh, was curious because Visa and MasterCard suspended all their stuff. Yeah. You can't buy stuff. So I tried. You know, I'm just doing good journalism here, right? So went onto the platform, logged in, made an account, and tried to buy some of the content creators' videos. And I couldn't, dude. So I was like trying to figure that out. Like, because everyone else, too, it just links like, hey, man. Everyone's bio is just like, go to my OnlyFans. Right. And that's so a, I did. And that's and the thing. And then I just Sorry. locked it down. <laughs> just got so, it there. That's what I want to start off with them is like, yo, dude, like, why not just go to OnlyFans at this point? Yeah. Because that's what I was going to say. You know, he's, he's, he's very much so advocating for the sex worker forward future of Pornhub, right? But mm. how are you going to be sex worker fu- forward if you can't even pay your employees? Right? Yeah. And it's been like two years like that. We had yeah. questions, Solomon. We're going to bring the heat. You better be ready, man. Who's advocating? Who who are you interviewing? Oh, Solomon Freeman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, did I just say his name for the first time yeah, there? Not yeah. give any context? Well, he's an owner of Pornhub. But there but it is. You got Solomon it. Freeman. There we yeah. go. Okay. It's all. It's out there now. Yeah. Next, uh, next week. It's coming out, man. I'm excited to talk to him. We're not going to bring the heat. We're going to bring a very... Mm-hmm. It's well gonna be a great. Discussion. It's gonna be a great discussion. We have. I'm. I'm excited, Solomon, for you to walk in here and see the flow chart we got going on in the back room. And yeah. Just this insane <laughs> spider web. That, like, <laughs> we have 17 pictures of your face back there. Yeah. And they're all surrounded by candles. <laughs> 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 I'm really looking forward to talking, man. And uh, the date of recording. So this episode's out today, Thursday. Um, the date of recording is tomorrow, Friday night. Mm-hmm. Um, you made. I know you're watching this, Solomon, because you guys, you, you guys, you guys own Pornhub. Like you guys are doing your due diligence. When we reached out to you, your uh, Sarah got back to me, and she's like, "Hey, by the way, love the Sebastian Maniscalco impression." So I'm like, "Okay, these guys, dog." <laughs> they listened to minute forty three. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, that was deep in the episode, dude. Like, I thought we dog, you guys dig, man. So I know you're watching this. <laughs> The timing of the interview is strategic because mm-hmm. we're going to the gilly for pints after. Bold right? call on your behalf. You we're, said if this doesn't result in pints afterwards at the gilly, couple doors up, mm-hmm. then we didn't do our jobs exactly. right. Exactly. If he doesn't want to share a pint with us, we, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm done. Just I'm one quitting. beer between all of us. <laughs> 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 you want to go for a pint, bud? And then we just buy a pint and <laughs> four, get four straws. <laughs> <laughs> like a milkshake dude that's if the interview goes really well <laughs> yeah like, <I> just... <laughs> oh man but no i'm really looking forward to it, man i'm excited for what we got coming up this summer this is just the tip of the iceberg very um, tip we got uh just giving you guys the tip coleman phelan <laughs> john myself we have been working around the clock mm-hmm. to give you guys quality journalism done the down of the wire way aka mm-hmm. the right way so it's coming at you guys this summer, starting with this Pornhub thing, and we're going to learn if we're really about this life coming up. Did you write that? Because that was poetic, man. I'm like Lil Wayne, bro. I, I don't like to write because then people can steal my shit. It's just all in here. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Soon you're going to start putting like the red handkerchief over the microphone when yeah. you do it. That's hard. <laughs> That's hard. And then when someone pulls up, I'm going to have a fucking teleprompter behind his head. <laughs> just like reading <laughs> verbatim so I don't fuck everything yeah, up. Yeah, we, we we're back. We're cue card guys tomorrow, man. We're cue card yeah, guys. Yeah, we are going to be cue card guys. I just don't want to fuck it up, man. I just That's it. We're, when we do the real work, the real journalism yeah. that we had telling you about, that, yeah. this is we're going to buckle down. But, so we're looking forward to seeing you, Solomon. Co-founding partner, VP of Compliance, Ethical Capital Partners, and new owners of MindGeek, thus owners of everyone's favorite website. Great use of the word. Men.com. Thus, com. man. Great Thanks, work. man. Great work. Yeah. <laughs> Men.com. <Yeah>. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, he owns a bunch of others, like whatever, browsers, Pornhub, whatever, the mainstream shit. Um, yeah. But You're about that underground, huh? I'm yeah. about that underground. <laughs> Sean and Cody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which they also laughed way too hard. <laughs> the only one that truly got that reference, I think. That's an if you know, you know. That's an if you know, you know type of deal right there. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know. I just saw it in a news article. I just assumed by the, the name what it was. Uh, the more you talk, the worse. Keep going. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Get me out of here. But we have a, a dope episode today. Today is going to be true variety show style coming mm, at you guys because mm, we have mm. a bunch of proper segments coming your way 
because this is something that we've been wanting to do. We got pop up podcasts coming later on. We got algorithm suck job coming up. And then, of course, you got back page news and back page news. We have some major stories coming your way there. Apparently. So this is coming out of Spain. There are loopholes where you're allowed to drink on the job. Yeah. All right. I see your eyebrows being raised right now. That's right. And it's not just going to the bathroom for a quick shotgun. You no, know no, no, what I mean? No, no. These are these are formed loopholes. Tried and tested loop tolls. Loop tolls. <laughs> loop tolls. Loop you tolls. Can do. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Racco's been testing them out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm. Uh, yeah. Uh, Eight beers deep. <laughs> Twelve o'clock right now. <laughs> in Texas, you're allowed to have guns in schools. Uh, I'm gonna leave it as vague as that because uh, I want to. Yeah, I just I feel like it's a good clickbait. Yeah. <laughs> But it's not lying clickbait. It's true. It is true. Um, yeah. I mean, people have bringing them to school for a long time yeah. in Texas. So why yeah. not? Yeah. Bye. I'm not going to say anymore. Yeah. We're going to keep it vague. We got Canadian geese attacking the government. That's real. And we also got, uh, oh yeah, failed drug sting gone wrong. Um, yeah, I feel like we could have done a better job. Before we get into the back page news though, this talking's making me thirsty. Who needs a Red Bull? I need one. I'm dying here. <laughs> this episode is fueled by Red Bull. Like all the other episodes, it depends depending on how long you've been listening. Um, we got a ton of yellow right now, so we got to offload these. Coleman, Phelan, John. Yellow bull. Um, I'm good for now. I've, wow, dude, dude. I'm ripping this ice cap. I'm really close to being done it, so I'm going to check back in. With I'll you have a like, yellow. You mess with the bull, you get the horns, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that not there? Why is that not there? Uh, Yikes! That we haven't snag. failed that toss yet. Nope. Never will. No matter Never how hard will. you've made it for him. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> that one's fun. <laughs> what you shouldn't... We've never failed that. You should be like, you've never missed that catch. <laughs> Coming up for Red Bull, May 7th. That's mm. a Sunday, so I know you're not doing shit. Come out in the morning... We're doing a, I don't want to call it a fun run. There's an actual name yeah, it's for not it. fun. There's nothing fun about it. <laughs> it's a serious run. But you know what, man? Saving lives is fun. That is And that's fun. what this is for. It's mm -hmm. for a good cause. It's going to spinal cord research, I believe. Absolutely. And yeah, dude, we're going to be there. It's the whole world's tapping in. There's going to be people in Italy running. There's people in Australia running. There's people in America. That's pretty much the whole Canada. world right there. You got it. <laughs> The so. four countries of the globe. <laughs> wow. We're still Pangea, bro. <laughs> Everyone's connected, bro. We're all, Harmony. We're all one, man. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a it's a global event. Everyone's running at the same time. If you're here in Ottawa, you're running at 7.30 a.m. 7.30 a.m. We're bright and early running. Yes. <laughs> I think it's... How long is it? It's long. It's long enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's long. What's what's yeah. too long to run for you? Let's just let's cut the camps for a second here. What's too like let's be honest here. How can I how can much I be, how much are we gonna try? I'm gonna be real. Yeah. I've never ran. Real I yeah. I've never run. I didn't learn until late in life how to. Yeah. So even when I do it now, I look a little janky. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't mean? know how to. You know Forrest Gump before he got the splints off? That's sort of still what I kind of look like when I run. You do kind of have a weird run. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not built for it. Right? Yeah. Mm -mm. You have a very weird run. You look like... Uh... No, there's no <laughs> nice way of putting that. No, no, it, it's not. I, 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 I hate it. You do I... look like you're on a mission when you run. I, I... Your head is down. When you run. Yeah. You're getting there. Yeah. Th I think that's the whole point of running though. You know what I mean? Like the only reason I can think to run is to get from one point <laughs> to the other faster. <laughs> so if I got to put my head down to get there, I mean, I'm going to, right? Anyways, join us Sunday, May 7th. We're going to be there. There's a huge breakfast afterwards on behalf of Red Bull. So yeah. we'll just, yeah, it'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. Trust me. Um, and you'll feel productive by like 10 a.m., which is the best feeling ever. Get up early, do something good with your life and for the world, and then yeah. feel good early in the day. If you want to be a real hero, don't sleep the night before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, actually, let's do that. If you guys want to party with us the night before, we'll yeah. stay up the whole night and then do this fun. We're going to drink Red Bulls all night before yeah. the Red Bull run, and then we're going to have heart attacks at meter 53. The heart attacks won't be from the Red Bull. No. Heart attack sold separately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Algorithm suck job. 
All right, this is a new segment we've launched. Uh, I like the way it's going. It's fun. It's stuff that's just been on our algorithms, and we it's just it's just interesting stuff. It's probably been on your algorithms too, and we're gonna discuss it because we need something to throw in the thumbnail. First things first. Uh, whose algorithm are we sucking off? Let's go you first, man. Me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I Appreciate needed this. That. I needed this. <laughs> Doing such a good job today, Racco. I us off. Every, man, we're, we're in this together, man. This is a team effort. Sometimes I feel like the kicker of an NFL team, though. Because like 95% of the time I'm doing things right and zero credit. But when that 5% of the time when I fuck up, I hear it, bro. <laughs> I fucking hear it, bro. That's also a real. Yeah, I've, I definitely am not. I fuck up more than 5% of the time, but when, when I do, I, I, I definitely feel it. If you're a kicker, you're Corey Parkey, man. Yeah. I'm not even in the league anymore, man. <laughs> XFL kicker. Okay, um, this came up on my algorithm. The So Pete Davidson just pushed, a, uh, I guess we can call him a fan. He, he was, was wearing- at the next game and he shoved this fan. And I'm happy that I saw the original video first because I saw the original video and you see the build up to it. Yep. The video that's been circulating is just the shove. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you watch the full video... It's about 30 seconds long. You can see Pete kind of taking some photos with some fans. This guy's kind of getting up in his neck, photo bombing, And then he gets in there one last time. Pete just has enough. It's not like he's getting up in his neck. It looks like he's trying to smell the back of his earlobe. That's it. mm -hmm. That's how... Like it's not like That's getting up in their neck, dude. (laughs) That is is exactly what getting getting up in your neck is. Actually, real quick, can you smell his earlobe and see if you can see if you can stay out of his neck? So you're giving selfies? Okay, I'm uh yeah, I'm Pete Davidson. Oh I'm I'm way above average, definitely. Yeah, see in my hey, neck. Yo. In my neck. In my neck. <laughs> <laughs> see, your initial reaction is it's, get the fuck off me. And that's yeah. why I have no problem with it. The reason why I also have no problem with it is because this guy did it like two or three times. Yeah. And Pete like didn't do nothing. Mm. And then on the last time, Pete was like, fuck off, man. Get, yeah, literally, the video is from three point range away. Yeah. And he's just like, you can see him. He's like, get the fuck off me. Yeah, it sucks to see get like, it looks like clockwork for this guy though. You know, like he's like just like, yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> and he just gives another <laughs> selfie immediately after with the fan. It's like, bro, that's fucked. Like, I want to, like, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's crazy to me. Um, he just that, goes that, home and, like, just powers down. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> All right, John, what's your algorithm got for us? I got a, I'm a, I'm a Celtics fan. Hard loss last night. Ice Trey just did it. But this is completely unrelated to that. But, this was how confident we were that we were going to take the series last night is that we double booked TD Garden for the Janet Jackson concert when game six is supposed to be. No, it's in Atlanta. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, it's sorry, sorry. Yeah. Right. Because they, they, cause man, the if, Atlanta was Atlanta even was not <laughs> confident, man. No, that's no, man. crazy. I That's crazy. I thought it was it was at TD Garden and they were like, yeah, fuck it. We won't done in they thought they'd be done in four even you know it's a very boston thing to do but that's such a like that's a brutal thing for atlanta to do like this is why you don't have a hockey team anymore is because you're like yeah in five games the mayor just had a huge bet on like four one but celtics i think they could have done it what both in one night that'd be crazy i think they could have done yeah halftime show hour and a half long halftime show yeah no one's mad about that no one's mad about that i think you just you don't sell tickets for the hawks game it's just whoever's going to the Janet Jackson show now gets a mm-hmm. show and a basketball game, right? I think you let her do a couple songs in between each quarter. Yeah, because if you mm. go to a basketball game, there's already music being played mm-hmm. while the game's going on. <laughs> so in now game, you just in, have Janet. You're just cutting her mic every She's time. Yeah, yeah. entertainment yeah. is inbound. Janet Jackson. That's exactly. crazy. You have them run simultaneously. You know what I mean? Mm. Hour and a half of Janet Jackson overlaid with an hour and a half of NBA basketball. Mm-hmm. Man, that's kind of crazy. She kicks that it off have... with the national anthem. Yeah, yeah, wow. And then she, yeah, dude. That's crazy. There's and then she sings thing. another Janet Jackson song <laughs> after that. And then one after another. Another, she sings Janet Jackson. She got the encores. How electric would that be? Because either the Hawks win, yeah, and that's a crazy night. She's ripping encores after the game, yeah, or the Hawks lose, and you're like, dude, I just, you know, at least I got to see Janet. At least I got to see Janet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're coming back to Racco here. This is a good meme. Yeah, this has been going a uh, while right now. I'm loving these Miley Cyrus uh, voice remixes that are going on. So just play her her voice. 
the journey is usually the part that you remember anyway. And there's a lot of ones that Sounds are just like, like my buddy's aunt. She worked at the bowling. <laughs> she worked at the bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> she smoked she, cigs through her goiter dude literally we we would like you'd pull up to the bowling alley and then you'd have to like wait at the front desk for a while for her to stop smoking a cigarette and throw it down and then come in and then give you your shoes <laughs> <laughs> my, <laughs> my favorite one's the dog the journey is usually the part that you remember anyways <laughs> i just yeah. want to know what happened like she, it, well, first of all, I think she's from California, right? So they already have some vocals. Yeah, this like is like Valley, the 902, or what's the this SNL one? Like the yeah, the Californians. Californians, it's, that's it's it. It's not the accent, though. Like the, it's, I know, it's the raspiness of it. She sings it's like, part of it. like, she sings yeah. like crazy. Like, if you listen to her music, she's a rock singer. Like, she yeah. wails. So, like, I think, like, that has enough wear and tear on your voice. That, too. I bet you the bong hoots from a yep. young age. We all remember that video of Miley Cyrus ripping a bong hoot back in the day do you remember that that's why i started smoking yeah Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Yeah. jay's on my feet was what i <laughs> was the reason i started smoking man <laughs> yeah I, I don't know i bet she smoked a cig or two in her life she likes she looks like Miley Cyrus now looks like she likes a drunk cig you know oh yeah and i feel like dude. she drinks a lot oh dude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway no, i i it's, it's yeah I, I think i don't think it affects her this is a hilarious meme yeah though. what's your favorite me like remix of this he meme? was saying the, I dog. Said the dog what's yours i like this droid one this, this droid one's one hilarious is awesome. yeah yeah run it from the journey is usually the part that you remember anyways my troops are in position to begin searching the swamps for these rumored underwater villages <laughs> That's so good, <laughs> so good, man, so good. Well, I think Miley is low key like a dope, like probably top five person to have a drunk sig with, though. Now that you mention mm. that, mm -hmm. oh, dude, if she's got only, some stories. You and, only like, talk to Miley Cyrus for the seven minutes it takes to smoke a cigarette outside of a bar with her. Like that was that's a top ten person to have a seven minute conversation mm. with. Yeah. yeah, there's this one guy. This one guy <laughs> I knew. He coached a hockey team, and my buddy like also he coached, coached a hockey team. No, he coached coached a hockey team. Like he he, he made up what. This guy I know was the coach of a hockey team. My other buddy was also like the assistant coach. Is that like the mascot, the, the couch furniture. Are you going to let me just tell the fucking you story? by Leon's? <laughs> Anyways, he used to tell, he blinked really weird and he. Hey, did you say coach weird? All right, let's just fucking. <laughs> 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 what you were saying? No, it's good. We're going to move on. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, is this the last thing on the algo? Yeah, we can run this last. This is something Racco just found out about. And also yeah, man. Um, I came across this reel about this guy talking about the CHL. And to all the hockey bros listening to this, this isn't the Canadian Hockey League. We're talking about the Colored Hockey League. And we'll just play the reel right now. He explained it really well. You thought that hockey, that the puck was the only thing black in hockey. <laughs> but guess what I got for you? Show us. Colored Hockey League, please. We need to show this. Say, it says here the Colored Hockey League was hockey's first organized league in 1895. 1895, black African Canadians just, um, created hockey. Show show the photos, images. There's a book called Black Ice that yeah, yeah, this yeah. white dude wrote. Yeah. And it's the history that they hid in Canada. Black history. Black hockey players in the 1800s. It's crazy. And they never said shit. And it was in Nova Scotia. Yeah. Nova Scotia. Now, Nova Scotia, after the war, they had Africaville. Africans, Canadians created an Africaville. They don't have it anymore. They got rid of, you know, oh, they pushed Africans out because, you know, a lot of people come out of Nova Scotia. Now, the first black hockey player that went to the NHL, to the Boston Bruins, was from Nova Scotia. His name was Willie O'Ree. Okay. Willie, show Willie O'Ree real quick. Willie O'Ree was the first black player in hockey from Nova from Nova Scotia. The same <laughs> area that they discovered, black people discovered hockey, created hockey. Now, The Rock's father is from Nova Scotia. Wow. Was the Rocky first Johnson. was the first um famous rest, black wrestler, right. the Soul yeah. Patrol. Yes. From yeah. Nova Scotia. So, we should all know the history of Africville by now. Um but there is a really rich black history and Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. You guys proud of that? You excited when you heard this story? 
Do I I didn't know actually about this story, but yeah, Nova Scotia like through high school like they do a pretty good job of like teaching about like Black history in Nova Scotia, which is pretty dope because there's a lot. Maybe not for the right reasons, but it's good that they like teach a lot about it. But I had no idea about this, and this is really sick. But there's some t- the team names from this are probably like not the best thing about it, obviously, but it's probably <laughs> like it's it's it's, it's there there's some sick team names, man. Like the Hammonds Plains Mossbacks. Yeah, that's Imagine crazy. a throwback jersey to the Hammonds Plains Mossbacks. That's unreal stuff. The Dartmouth Jubilees. Yeah, I like the Truro Victorias. <laughs> <laughs> Say that five times. Make a chant out of that. Tr- Truro? In the- Truro <laughs> Victorias. Africville Seasides. That's interesting. Yeah. Back yeah. when there was a thriving community yeah it's just interesting man destroyed like destroyed that place yeah it was fucked up it's interesting just yeah i didn't had no idea about that i'm surprised that. you didn't know no, no yeah. idea bro. there's a lot of people that don't know about it i guess yeah so i found that really interesting because yeah hockey is typically seen as a white sport so it's just cool to see that there was like a whole history before it you know mm-hmm. yeah. bring that shit back that's why we need good history class all right <laughs> bring back the colored hockey league is well, that what you <laughs> Is that what you meant? I meant bring it up from the past. Oh, okay, Make okay, hockey okay. great again. Just needed, just needed bring the clear. knowledge back. Bring that shit back. Okay, I get what you're saying now. <laughs> My bad. My bad. <laughs> it's like the, the MLB, the show colored yeah. video game. I thought it was a joke when like I was on like Instagram and it was like, the Negro League's expansion pack coming now. I was like, what? Like, yeah. is this, who's... John texted all of us. He was like, is this okay? Yeah, like, I didn't know, man. Like, <laughs> that was crazy to me. I saw that. I was like, what? Yeah, but imagine, like, NHL 2K, but this... Yeah, this is This not, expansion it's pack. It's from, like, wow. 1895, too. Like, they're wearing yeah. no helmets. Yeah, one... one <laughs> this is the last thing we'll talk about, but the one really interesting thing in this Canadian Encyclopedia article was talking about how in this league, there was a lot of, like, techniques that were um invented before they came to the national hockey league so the first like slap shot slap shot like a an early version of a slap shot came from here goalies going down to block huh. shots came from here black people are just better at sports they are dude they they, they, yeah. they they just do everything better they make it they keep progressing it because yeah that's crazy like what were they doing before yeah I don't know. <laughs> just like apparently the only rule book in this league was the bible so that they had room for innovation are you serious yeah, yeah. that's what it says yeah all right no kissing before we get into back page news, we hit the streets. We talked to some strangers for 60 seconds at a time mm-hmm. in this new segment we like to call 60 Second Podcasts. And yeah, I mean, we did it a few episodes back and the highlight was obviously the guy talking about sniffing a little something. It's getting you through your day today. I woke up, I took a little sniff, bro. No, like for real. Like I took a little sniff of something, bro, and then I was fully awake, bro. You know? What? what? Yeah, I, I like talking to strangers at sixty seconds at a time because that's the perfect amount of time I think you need to be talking to people you don't know. They get weird. Any after longer, that. it gets weird. They get yeah, weird some people that. lingered. Yeah. Like the timer would go off, and I'd be like, "That's a minute," yeah. and then they just keep it going, and then be like, "And then our dad left." You know? <laughs> He's just like, "What? <laughs> How do we get here?" Yeah. I'm talking about cereal thirty seconds yeah. ago. <laughs> So uh, here you go. Enjoy. How you doing? Hi. You want to do a minute podcast? Okay. No worries. How you doing? You guys can walk through. Do you want to do a minute long podcast? Okay. No worries. Hello. Hi. Just takes t- 60 seconds. It's just for fun. Whatever you want it to be about. 60 seconds. All right, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Sorry. You got plans this weekend yet? Uh, it's early in the week, studying but for uh, midterm. Damn. All right. Midterm. A lot of book nerds over here. Yeah. <laughs> that's good though. Yeah. So you don't end up doing podcasts on the side of a hallway yeah. in Carlton. Can you do a kickflip? I just learned to like two weeks ago. Really? Yeah, I can't do them too consistently. Do you have the confidence to do one right now? Uh. Let's see. Oh. I still working on. I was res- I respect you trying that though. Like just 
in front of everyone. I know. It's kind of yeah. like when you're parallel parking. You don't know how it's going to go down. I can't drive. You seem so timid. Are you scared? I, yeah. What do you think is going to happen? I'm going to become famous. We do have someone hiding out that's going to scare the shit out of you. No, I believe it. But other than that, you have it. nothing to be worried it. about. I know karate. <laughs> you know karate? No. What's your least favorite sport and why? My least favorite sport is golf because it's mad boring. Mm. I can't. I, I try playing it. It's it's mad boring. Yeah. I can't do it. I and they hate women. <laughs> you know exactly. you, you know that's what golf stands for, right? Seriously? Gentlemen only, ladies forbidden. You're lying. I swear to God. Nah, bro. I'm uh, personally. I'm a wrestler. I'm a wrestler. Okay, so you, you know? love guys too. How badly do you wish that it was 1977 right now? I really wish it was 1977. Right? I would give it all, bro. You got that like on the head of the nail. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, I I too I too wish it was 1977. Yeah. What do you like? You know, when you look back, like, what are the things that make you, like, miss being there, even though you weren't there the most? I would love to get to one of those, like, classic Rock Titans concerts, Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, just being the yeah. vibe. Yeah. I really would love to see that. I'd love to see, like, a like a bar show, like, you know, when they're still underground, like, yeah. that sort of era. Oh, man. I was born in the wrong generation. Shut the fuck up. What'd you have for breakfast today? I had eggs. Eggs. Yes. Wow. Explain the idea behind the satchel bag as opposed to the backpack. Oh, uh, I just like the way it looks. Likes the way it looks. Yeah. Is it more comfortable? No, no. You, uh, you, uh, nah, you smoke nah, weed? I don't do that. Nah. You don't do that? Nah, I don't no, I don't do that. No? Yeah, you, you, I'm a clean guy. You want to smoke weed? No, nah, I don't do that. That guy's got weed if you want. Who, him? Yeah, well, who, who do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can tell from his eyes. He's, he's <laughs> yeah. iced. Eggs. Yes. Wow. I, I was a video gamer at one point. Okay. And then I was like, you know what? This is a waste of time. Yeah. And I, I decided to, to start women. sending it in the gym, bud. Yeah. Yeah. Is it easier to talk to women now? I would say. Or does your inner gamer come out and you just start yelling inner, at people? No, 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 no. Whenever I talk to women, I talk to them like they're a person. No, no, that's the way to do it. What a thing! Yo, this is this minute starts now. This is legendary. Right, right. This is the infamous GG's Have Small Peepees guy that yep. featured in our yep. vlog. What do we have to say about the Ottawa Peepees? They're so small. Is it there? I don't know. I can't see it. Can you? Has your life changed since that moment? You know what? I feel like I finally have my purpose. I know what I want to do for my future. Do people recognize you now? You know what? Yes. You I've get recognition like for three, that. I was on like 20 viscos, I swear. There's only one way to actually find out, though, if exactly. they have small peepees. Yeah, there is. Are you willing to take it to that level? I think I'm dedicated at this point. I think at this point, you know, I have to go the full mile. You got to. Or for GG's, the full centimeter. You have w one final message to give to the people. What is it? You know, come to Carlton. You gain three inches. <laughs> <laughs> You've been sitting there the past, like, hour. How annoying has this been for you? Honestly, I haven't gotten any work done because it's actually been really interesting. <laughs> heard a lot of really neat answers. Guy before me, I don't know who he was, but apparently he was somebody, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was someone. He was the guy just now? Yeah. The GG's have small PPs guy? He's in the I'm stands sorry. at every Carlton GG's game, and he has a sign that says, GG's have small peepees. Oh, That's wow. what he's kind of known for. It's his thing. I respect that. Yeah, he's got nothing going after that. <laughs> I'm going to start crying. All right. Would you like to ignore me? Would you guys like to do a minute-long podcast? Would you like to... All right. I didn't realize until after watching these pop-ups how creepy I sound when I'm trying to like, <laughs> initiate conversations. Hey, man. Like, why does my voice change? I'm like, hey, you want to do a 6 7 <laughs> Like, no, that's not more welcoming. There's one where you <laughs> literally go, hi there. Hi. <laughs> Dude, so creepy. So creepy. Dude, I didn't know that. That's a problem. Like, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> I think I'm more welcoming. Yeah, because when we were there, you were like, you know, you're very, because I'm like, 60 second podcast. You want to do 60 second podcast? You want to do one? And I'm just very like in your face. He's like, I take a much different approach to it. But yeah. Yeah. You, you're like, you're like, you're selling something at the fair. Yeah, I'm an auctioneer, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like. Step right up. Step right up. 60 second podcast. Just yeah. takes a minute. You get vulnerable with yeah. it. I get really <laughs> vulnerable like, with it. Come here. I think that's why so many people that join the show have like daddy issues. Because the way I'm like approaching it, like, hey. <laughs> Want to come join? I don't know. It's just yeah, it's weird, man. It's weird. You guys I got a Michael Jackson voice impression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's that guy's? What's that, what's that guy's name from Family Guy? 
She's like, oh. hello there. <laughs> <laughs> the pervert, the pervert? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> or the other guy. No, that was him. <laughs> pervert, the pervert. Hey, Shut up, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I'm slappy in the penis. <laughs> 60 Dude. second podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I've had eggs. Wow. wow. <laughs> All week, yeah. dude. Dude, dude. Dude, it's so, it's so funny though because we're quote our talk about it. It's like wow. you have like, because we do like, with the shifts in the chairs are like 40, sometimes 30 to 45 minutes of just sitting there talking to people a minute at a time. So, and like there's good ones and when there's a good one, you know it's a good one, but half the time you're just like, you're like, oh my God, I'm 15 seconds in. I need this follow, man. I need this follow. <laughs> but yeah, that's where it comes. It's like, you had eggs for breakfast? Crazy. Yeah, yeah. That one strap like backpack isn't like more uncomfortable? Crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely making me better at like on the spot. Yeah. I was telling Coleman like it's going to help me when it comes to like crowd work shit in the mm. future because I'm just literally just... Yeah. I don't go in with much. I have like a couple questions that I think would be good jumping off points. Yeah. But we, we were there for like hours. Yeah. So like we, we need new shit. I don't want to keep asking the same thing. Yeah. You know, but uh, alas. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just like, uh, let me smell your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, pretty, uh, pretty fucking ugly. eh? <laughs> Jeez. They say to me. Um, all right. It's time to get into the back page news. And now, <laughs> fighting! <laughs> I was thinking, like, maybe it'd be better like that. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> you need to commit for know, the main I know, event. I know. I know. And now, is that okay? I know. I know. Is that, <laughs> I know. Did I do that good? I know. It's not. Did I, is that, was that awesome? I'm hesitant. Yeah. Yeah. For the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Am I, am I killing this or not? <laughs> <laughs> the insecure boxing host. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good bit. <laughs> the moment you've all been waiting for. Or maybe not. I don't know what you do on a regular basis. You know. <laughs> uh, time for back page news. We're going to get right into it. John, read us the first story. Spanish firm wrong to fire electrician for drinking alcohol during the working day, the court rules. So, okay, this guy found, I don't know if he just has really good lawyers or if Spain is just, I don't know, I think we need to just move our location over there. It's built it's, different. Mm. Yeah, it's built different. Like, because they're saying that they did not prove that his consumption had left him inebriated, intoxicated, or drunk, or unable to do his job. Keep in mind... The company hired a PI. Yeah, a private investigator <laughs> to find this guy. Like, he, he was spying on this guy and saw him. Like, we'll walk you through one of his days. So, this happened in July. This guy's like the Hunter S. Thompson of electricians, bro. <laughs> like, let's walk you through this guy's day here. <laughs> so, July 5th, him and his colleagues went out for a beer. Or they went out. They went into a bar. They didn't see what they drank at the bar, but they went to the bar at eight twenty-seven in the morning. So the days just start. You could have like, maybe we give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it was just a water. You know, wet the palate. Okay, could at lunchtime that could have day, been a Caesar. Yeah, exa a Caesar, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. At lunchtime that day, the pair bought a loaf of bread, some food, four cans of San Miguel beer, and a liter of Estrella de Levante beer. Later that same <sighs> afternoon, the man Ooh. was seen drinking another can of beer. So we're at like. Uh, a couple beers here. <laughs> and then a little before 6.30 p.m. now, mm -hmm. he was seen drinking another can of beer. Oh, that's what you just said. No. No, no. no this is different. See, I'm, More beer. Yeah, this is more, more beer. beer. This guy beers, bro. This and then a fortnight later, him and colleagues were seen <laughs> drinking a total of seven liters of beer between, between mid-morning and the end of their lunch break. Later that day, the man was spotted drinking two cans of Heineken as well. Before, before heading back to the company's offices. So yeah, the company, this guy's been working there for 27 years and the company hired a PI to follow him around, see what he's up to. And then after learning this information, they fired him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So John said later that day they drank a uh, couple cans of Heineken. Six days after that, he was seen drinking another bottle of beer before lunch and then drinking three glasses of red wine followed by a shot of Pomace brandy. So this guy's mixing too now. So, <laughs> and then they fired him, and then they said it wasn't right because he 
they couldn't prove yeah. that he was actually drunk on the job. Keep in mind, he drove the work van mm-hmm. during all of this, and they couldn't prove that he was over the legal limit. Yeah. So the so what they did was like the detective was like this guy was drinking all this beer and then his lawyers were like well he didn't say he was drunk or clumsy you know what I mean he the investigator seemed to have left that part out so they got off and they have to now either pay this man forty seven thousand euros or just reinstate him he gets to work again for the company. Um, what I find interesting is that they said that they didn't have an expert on like deem him intoxicated so and if i'm the company i'm like the fuck did i hire this private investigator for like how are you not an expert yeah like i love like, how you should have like his, you know what i mean or breathalyze him you know what i mean his whole his whole his whole defense is like just because i'm drinking doesn't mean i'm drunk you know what i mean <laughs> like yeah, he's the functioning alcoholic exactly and they, they exist functioning alcoholics exist. exist alcoholics drink hard liquor functioning alcoholics drink beer and wine what's <laughs> fucked is that he's an electrician <laughs> An electrician, that's that's a tough gig. And it's very important when you're dealing with electricity to maybe be yeah, the I feel, sharpest you can be. Maybe, yeah. Like I feel like if you if this guy was a plumber, a carpenter, different story. You know what I mean? He's probably a piece of shit sober. It's probably for everyone's benefit that he drinks all this <laughs> beer. Like, let's be honest here. This guy's probably a dick. But, like, that's a ton of beer to drink. You take that out of his day... <laughs> way yeah. downhill right he's also been doing it for 27 years maybe he just needs a challenge at this point like electrician works too easy for him like exactly. this actually actually keeps him excited he's got to do it on hard mode it's the same yeah, reason you know? why, it's the same reason when you go play golf beer a hole you know what i mean game's too easy you got to make it a little more difficult for yourself um what i think that they should do and i've thought this for a while is like when he went to court there should be like a gauntlet challenge they put him through you know what i mean to prove whether or not he'd be you know, mm-hmm. able. So they sit yeah. him down. They give him three liters of beer. You get 15 minutes to finish it, right? Like a lunch break sort of scenario yeah, yeah. here. Then they get thrown behind like the the wheel of the company van, right? He has to go through an obstacle course mm-hmm. on like a controlled track. You know, no one around. Then he has to like change three light bulbs, fix a socket, you know, and then maybe like a bigger, longer, like a long test answer equivalent. And then they're like, hey, if he can do that in a certain amount of time, it's good to go. I think that should carry, you know, if you get busted for driving high, be like, all right, well, I want you to take me to a track and I can show you that it's really not that bad. You can run out in front of me at some point if I jam on the yeah. brakes. Like, It's like when you're caught cheating on a test, they give you the same test and like, hey, do it again now. Yeah. Like, try to get 100% this time. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, don't, I feel like all the money they spent on hiring a private investigator for weeks yeah, because they've tracked him down for almost the entire month. You could have just bought a breathalyzer on Amazon, 30, 40 bucks. <laughs> or could have just paid him 47,000 euros to get rid of him, too. No? Severance? Do you think yeah. it would have cost around $47,000 $47, to get Well, a plus PI? lawyers. Plus lawyers, yeah. Private investigators are not that cheap either, especially for a month. I'm going to yeah. say that. Call this guy around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double down on your breathalyzer thing. If you just have a breathalyzer waiting for him at the end of the day and he Costs blows. 30 bucks. Yeah, it blows way over. It's like a challenge. There's you know what I proof. mean? proof. Make it a game for him. You know, over a week, see how high you can get. And then when he gets to the point, be like, hey, you're fucking out of here, buddy. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> it's just funny that this like like what option would you take like i think you just hire him back i think yeah but now now it's awkward yeah now it's awkward. <laughs> this guy runs the ship there now. yeah he's been working 27 years they finally let him go they had to bring him back because he fought it in court do you think he showed up hammered day oh one? absolutely yeah. pinned i bet you he didn't go to work for the first day he was so drunk yeah all right, next headline we got here reads: Canada geese overrun the Ottawa D and D campus during their annual invasion. D and D is not Dungeons and Dragons; that is Department of National Defense. Just to be clear, yeah, um, that'd be <laughs> wild though if these geese were just fucking up a live action role play of D and D. That would be equally as like back page, or if there was just like a headquarters for D and D, and it was like <laughs> the people I like the people who run the D and D. It's just a legit fucking battle yeah, exactly. now. <laughs> yeah, the the generals are all just playing a session, and each of them have to pick a different country that we're enemies with to play. Yep. <laughs> you don't think that's funny? Oh, one oh, guy's China. You... Okay, okay. One guy's Russia. Like Rick, he's, he's tying it back to national defense. Yeah, no, I got yeah. it. I, it right over there at one point. So but. breeding season <laughs> is 
is a this it's, it said annually. So does this happen every year? Every breeze? spring. Every spring. Yeah, when it's come back. season for the geese. Right. Yeah. They have to deal with this issue. Yeah. So the West End campus here in Ottawa, just on Carling. Um, yeah, they get testy, man, with the employees, and the employees are told to. It's just funny that they have like <laughs> the Department of National Defense is has to like give defense advice to our national bird. Like, you know what I mean? Is it the national? It really be your own sometimes, it man. Really <laughs> be your yeah. Own people, man. It's always an inside job. <laughs> it's crazy though because they've told them, you know, don't run, don't run. That's what they want you to do. You got to stand your ground. You got to make a lot of noise. You got to get big. The way that quote <laughs> reads, though, where it says they tell their employees, like, don't run, stand your ground. What's the exact quote? Maintain eye contact. Give them space, as much space as you can. <laughs> they co do come toward you aggressively. Do not run. That is exactly what they want you to do. Like, is that an actual tip or is that just him being like, don't fucking run, man. They want you to run. <laughs> they don't want you to do that. Like, maybe you should be running, but they're just like... No, don't be a bitch. Like, fucking stand <laughs> your ground. Don't run away. You're the Department of National Defense. Don't, like, how bad of a look of that now is if CBC has an article about, like, this guy getting chased down by, like, a geese and he's running away. Like, is, I'm trying to figure out what the actual reason is as to why you're not supposed to run. Because I know for bears, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. Don't run. But that's a legitimate wildlife tip right there. You turn your back to them. Yeah, and you're toast. They'll come and get you're you. Toast. Yeah, yeah. I assume it's the same shit with you these think so? geese, bro. They're yeah. fucked up, man. Cobra chickens. That's it what says this if you stand your says. ground more often than not, they won't attack you. You got to yeah. stand your ground, man. I back home, we used to go hang at our family friends every like sp uh, every like fall. Go hang. hang. You you just you get the hay bales off the field and into the barn. Anyways, our family friends had a neighbor, my boy Jade Turner. He couldn't say his ours. Couldn't say his R's even when he graduated that high sucks, school. You guys love your R's. Yeah, I know. And so <laughs> his sister Wobbin Tona, she would like she would square I'm up. Sorry, her sister Wobbin. Um, <laughs> she used to like they had the geese in their yard. Yeah, a couple of them, and she would just box with Wait, them, like bro. They just were yeah, they had like, like pet, pet geese, geese, bro, and they because they were like guard geese, and she just like square up with them, bro. Straight up, I was for funsies. Her, like, literally, like Isn't that two a v one, crime? two v one. She was kind of like ducking and weaving these things. This so one came out. She kind of elbowed it. This other one, she like, grabbed it and like kind of whipped it into the other one. It's isn't, crazy shit. Isn't that a federal crime? No, they weren't candy geese. They're just regular geese. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, okay. it's chill. It was chill. <laughs> I think it was a good like. It was entertaining, man. It was entertaining. But they they resided in Canada. E yeah, on this farm. So technically, they're on, on, but on, they have American Jade. citizenship. Okay. Yeah, yeah. on Jade Tuana's farm. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they live. I like whenever you tell stories about back home, your accent just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah it's, it's wild. <laughs> His sister Wobbin. <laughs> she used to be crazy, dude. Yeah, she she was she just boxed with them, bro. And do you know what? Do you know who that she turned out to be? Muhammad Ali. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Dude, you're Just like kidding. six she's months of DMT away from Theo Vaughn. <laughs> she's she's in jail now. <laughs> Damn. No, I don't. I don't for, know. for boxing geese. I, I don't know. <laughs> One time I was driving on the Heron Bridge and like like cause I, I'm not a big fan of geese. They are scary as fuck. But like, see how it's gone. <laughs> the accent it's still a little there. It's you always so? been there, but okay. but it, it comes in waves you know I mean? for sure. We'll oh see, yeah, we'll see it in post. I, in, I, in post. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I I've I like geese. Like they always test me, man. Always mm. test me. I've always been like walking by geese, and it's like they know I'm there. They come and just like fuck with because they know who you associate. I with. guess so. Yeah, yeah. They know about <laughs> my this time. guy runs with Yobbin. Wobbin. 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 They know, dude. They, they travel. <laughs> Yobbin <laughs> sounds like a mythical creature. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, word they, spreads quick time, in the geese community, bro. Yeah, I guess they travel, right? Yeah, they bro. travel. So, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Yo. Apparently, because geese, Canadian geese are protected under the, uh, where is it? Migratory Bird Convention Act. Where are you reading that? In the the, the one that the is okay. Reality. So yeah. So okay. Yeah. The NBCA. Uh, it allows you can't fuck with the geese, but you are allowed to move the nests. Apparently, so they have guys that are need permits to be. They're like pro nest movers. Right. Right. So it's like I want to try. It. I think it'd be cool to get an interview with a nest mover. Because how do you? I feel like during breeding season, they're always at the nest. Like why would a geese ever leave? 
the nest and when they do leave the nest like what's your plan of attack and like when you do get the nest and you move it how do you inform the geese of like <laughs> where you, you move the, the nest you leave a letter there's <laughs> an eviction notice <laughs> on the ground like do you leave a trail of seed like <laughs> breadcrumbs yeah, yeah. Like, breadcrumbs. How do you, i don't understand <laughs> how do you let the geese know or is yeah. it just an easter egg hunt now literally <laughs> and you're just yeah, like and if you're relocating all these nests like how and you, like i assume you're gonna like you're not gonna take them to different areas i geese, bet you there's one central location you migrate these nests to <laughs> like the geese follow a trail and it's just some guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh thanks for coming just like <laughs> keeping it warm for you <laughs> Imagine the guy that does that, that's been doing that job for 27 years, and he's just getting loaded, moving geese to eggs or Yeah, geese he, he eggs lied around. on his resume 27 years. There's no technique to it. He, <laughs> yeah. he made it up years ago. Like, this is this is a made-up job. He's the only one in the world. He's just friends with whoever wrote that law. Somehow, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's secure. The law says one guy is allowed to move the eggs yeah. Yeah. And then his My son. buddy Jeff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the most difficult permit to get in Canada. Yeah, exactly. One guy has it. <laughs> Responsible for the whole nation too. Like. This is where all one percent of Canada's defense spending goes to. It's yeah. just this one guy. <laughs> he is the Department of National Defense, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I am the law. I am the Department of National Defense. <laughs> Sounds like a Dwayne the Rock Johnson quote, dude. <laughs> Bro. I actually am like that interests me the most. I don't know, like where do they move the nest? But I don't, I don't know. really need to know. We'll never know. <laughs> yeah, they don't say. We will know. We got to dig. In two weeks. Huh? Stay tuned. We're going to follow up the Pornhub interview with <laughs> a professional <laughs> geese nest mover. <laughs> Sound crazy back to our ring. Roots. There's such a good ring to that, dude. Like like, I'm on the edge of my seat for that one. <laughs> All right, We're going to move from feeding geese to... Nice, dude. Yeah, there's something feeding there. Feeding the geese, bro. Yeah, there's something feeding there. Feeding the geese yeah. to feeding the so geese. Moving the geese. Yeah, something. We'll cut that. <laughs> Alrighty. Next headline we got here reads Texas school district votes to place armed civilians in schools. So here's what's going down. This is happening in Texas. A school district uh, voted this week to hire school marshals tasked with patro patrolling campuses, conducting safety drills, performing safety checks. So what they're doing, what Coleman said is basically just like an air marshal. There's a guy who no one knows who it is. His identity is... Uh, private yeah i don't know who it is but he's carrying yeah and he, they're just patrolling the school protecting the kids and that's basically like that's basically it like i don't <laughs> even know like what else to yeah, he, say with it so they're gonna get rid of the off-duty police officers that are supposed to be patrolling the schools and replace them with these motherfuckers and they're paying five hundred thousand dollars for a pilot run which is three years and that seems like a pretty big budget i feel like it's not bad I mean, because there's only eight pay. schools. There's it only just it shows you how much of a problem it is. Like you have to give these people a contract of three years, five hundred thousand dollars, just because in that three years there's a good chance that you're gonna have to let that thing fucking pop off, bro. That's crazy. <sighs> Here's how I feel about guns and America's schools. approach to guns in schools. Okay, I feel like it's exactly like the Rube Goldberg thing. You know, where you like roll a ball and it hits a bunch of dominoes and it hits another thing which swings a boot somewhere and it kicks something and all this right. just to turn the light off that was right mm -hmm. beside the original ball you push. Mm -hmm. That's their approach to getting rid of guns <laughs> in schools. Right. Yeah. Like no it's guns right yet. in front of them. But how many of these complex <laughs> scenarios like what if we and build solutions are we going to come up box with box in the classroom and then all the kids move <laughs> in there so these backpacks <laughs> double as blankets right, that yeah. are bulletproof and that way if they get shot it'll just hurt less they're also oh see-through yeah they're also see-through yeah because that's the like come on it's you're right though that's hilarious that's, take yeah, on that's it so yeah funny. it's really tough to <laughs> grasp you know what i mean like i just don't understand I don't understand. It's like they're just like it's right there, but they just keep moving the pieces around it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you know, yeah, like we've tried doing that during COVID. One of those things where oh you push God, a bunch so of things. So hard too. And the whole time you're just like, let's just walk two feet and turn the fucking light off. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> why are we gonna keep doing this? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. So, dude. I liked it. Like they said, the person will be a confidential. Like their identity yeah, yeah. will be confidential, but like how like, yeah how are you just gonna like blend like this 37 year old's gonna <laughs> blend in 
He's gonna be like just hitting like the Fortnite dances on break, but just has like a glove. Yeah, the only other adult in this school that's not a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> what are they gonna have like? Who's that gonna be? A bunch of plants, so you don't know who's the right. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you just gonna Marshall? Like, 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 that's what I mean. You're gonna have to give. I assume it's gonna be a man that takes this job because, like, well, I'm just saying, <laughs> no one's stupid enough to just like oh <laughs> to let a woman <laughs> no, do a no, man's no, job. No, no. no woman's stupid enough to be like, yeah, no. That's a good fucking reason to take guns. Like, I feel like women are too logical to be like, put more guns in school to make it, like, safer. So, I feel like this man's just going to... What? Nice save. Thank you. (laughs) I'm hot right now. I'm very... Like, I'm warm to the touch after that. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I just needed to, like, cool myself down here. Um, But, no, like, you're going to have to, like... How are you going to blend this guy in? Like, is he just going to instantly get to teach gym? Because that's going to be the easiest class to mm. teach, right? I feel like you're picturing your school, right. which had how many people in it? Like 12? Yeah, this is Austin, Texas. And apparently, I think there's only eight schools. And Austin's a big city. So I feel like these schools are like a thousand kids each. I mean, you guys watch 21 Jump Street, right? Yeah, yeah. this guy's some Jonah Hill guy. Yeah, they'll hire Jonah Hill or Channing Tatum. Yeah. Both, like, f- f- hire them specifically. Yeah, specifically. Yeah, that's that why it costs $500,000. That's exactly. exactly yeah. why. You need them for three <laughs> yeah. years. They gotta contract them for three years. <laughs> some Justin Bieber looking motherfuckers. <laughs> and, and, the, and they'll blend in. It'll, it'll be great. Here, I don't understand, like, this is the whole mind fuckery. Is like, you spend the entire children's youth all their youth years teaching kids mm-hmm. not to trust and talk to strangers that are adults that like trying to be safe and now you're just supposed to trust complete strangers some 38 year old man yeah. walking around your school you're not supposed to question it all of a sudden yeah. you're just supposed to trust the stranger <laughs> just that has a gun on them yeah don't like, t- whatever you do don't ask gun guy gary any questions you know what i mean <laughs> off limits you know i don't understand dude. Yeah. it's wild if, if, if we're gonna be real here i think the only realistic way they could do it is if it's like the custodian like the janitor. Ooh. I think that's the only real way they could do it. He's just got a shotgun in the And in his the no, his his mop handle yeah. doubles as yeah. like one of the cane exactly. umbrella guns. Exactly. It's not an <laughs> actual employee though. It's, <laughs> oh, some, it's an outside hire. It would be a school district employee. Yeah, but like yeah, no. They would technically be a school district. Does he get an yeah, office? Does he get high. an office? Does he just get a central office? And then as soon as gunshots ring out, he just has to book it out there. That is interesting, though. Like if it was an existing member of the school that had to That's take on thing. this role, like how would they fight for that? Like would yeah. they just throw a gun in the middle of the gymnasium? Like, <laughs> like, go. <laughs> what if like I, I'm just like they do the beep like, test. Te- <laughs> picturing like a teacher like lecturing and using the laser pointer on their gun for the board. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. One real thing I'm interested in is that this quote says that the school marshals, which is why I compared it to an air marshal, because mm-hmm. it's like a secret guy with a gun, um, would in essence take the place of the hired off-duty police officers who presently reside on campuses. Is that not like a good thing? Because I thought there was a lot of talk about how these off-duty police officers are just like fucked. Mm. Like they'll just get like black kids for like being like five minutes late to class and just yeah. like, beat them up and shit. I saw a stat, but like the number <laughs> like, of arrests, like, sniff sniff people's lockers for weed and stuff. It's like mind your own fucking business. Yeah, guy. Have, this guy's not a narc. At least this guy's yeah. just here for the gun issues. Like, yeah, let's not be kids and smoke weed and just have some good old fucking you know yeah. school shooting tomfoolery or- action. But like, you know, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like it doesn't make sense. They're shutting down all things because yeah, I saw a stat that uh arrests like skyrocketed amongst teens in like these school areas and yeah had off-duty cops. Had, yeah but the thing against it too is like these off-duty cops are like already trained so you're not spending money on that where now they have to spend money on training these guys yeah i can see i can see that but i mean i just i the idea of like just because you guys did you guys ever had have cops in your school like there was yeah, one guy in a costume <laughs> If there was cops at my school, it was because they were picking up weed they found on some <laughs> student. Man. No, we did. We had we had uh, Constable John. Yeah, we yeah. had a yeah, we had like yeah. Constable Grant or something, yeah. and he would yeah. come around like he would come around like once every like two weeks. Oh, he was there just, every day for us. So, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was like uncomfortable on those like one day every two weeks, and it was just like yeah, like he just happened to stop by the office type shit, and I was like, get this fucking guy. Yeah, Const- yeah. I mean, imagine if you know that there's just a cop in your midst at all yeah. times at school. That just, I love I how like we're arguing. We're like. <laughs> don't take away a kid's right to smoke weed and go to class. Like, that's our <laughs> whole thing right here. 
We had it. Oh, yeah. We had it. I do remember now. We had a guy named Constable Fairfax, but he was there like once every two years, type of deal. <laughs> that's like a fake person. That's not a real person. He honestly, yeah, I don't even. <laughs> hindsight that was his 2020, alias, bro. Yeah, he was never in a uniform. <laughs> His meetings were always after. I don't know if this guy was a real cop, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. The cruiser Constable looked like... Fairfax. Yeah. <laughs> the cruiser was like a decommi- like an old cruiser that he just bought at a police auction or something. Something doesn't add up here. We didn't... This wasn't for you guys. You guys didn't have this either. <laughs> this didn't happen for y'all. Oh just a collective fever dream. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> Let's wrap it up here with this headline. Uh, last back page news story we got reads California drug dealer escapes with 60 pounds of sheriff's meth during a failed drug sting. So, this was a whole undercover plan mm-hmm. that uh, what, what uh, Riverside County Sheriff's Office had in their grasp. They had uh, 60 pounds of meth with them. Street value of one hundred and fifty to two hundred and ten thousand dollars, and then they <laughs> organized this huge drug deal, and they met up with the guy, made the transaction, swapped drugs, shook hands, and then this guy just took off <laughs> <laughs> like a drug dealer with, would. And then he left, and they got into a car chase. And the direct quote here is: "The suspect failed to yield, and a pursuit was initiated." <laughs> Due to the high speeds and suspects' disregard for public safety, deputies lost sight of the vehicle, the sheriff's office said. That in makes words, get in the car. In Why other words, in yeah, car? in other words, you fucking lost them. In you other just, words, you suck at car chases. You suck at car chases. Yeah. <laughs> I think this happened in California. Every California police department should hire unemployed stunt drivers. Mm-hmm. To just go with the cops when they're trying to do shit like this, so that they have a guy that they know can keep up. You're a real you know? fix it guy today. I like it. That's a, another great, another great suggestion. I just, I've, I don't understand how they took sixty pounds of meth when, like, I feel like the sentence you get served to you is the same between like five pounds of meth and sixty pounds of meth. So to bring sixty pounds of meth just seems yeah. a little overkill. You know what I mean? I don't know how the law works, but... <laughs> so let me just comment on it. Right <laughs> hey, down to the wire, police reform edition. Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, if you know a lot about the law, you're not a lawyer, that means you're a fucking criminal. But <laughs> I don't know enough about the law, but did the transaction have to be made? Like, did they have to give him the yeah. meth? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I was going to say... They're like, arresting him for buying meth. Yeah. If, they yeah. just, if they just gave him, like, Play-Doh... And we're like, I gotcha. You yeah. were you you wanted to. Like, that <laughs> so why don't up. you just tackle him as soon as you hand it to yeah. him? Yeah, here's the That's map. what they do. Boom! Like you hire like an NFL player to come just hit stick him. Yeah. You know what I we mean? We talked about this last week with the guy who got arrested for wanting to be a hitman. Mm. Yeah. They like did the FBI handshake, fucking slap the handcuff on him once the transaction's done. And that Why guy you- was a trained National Guard member. He wanted to be a hitman and he got caught by an FBI agent. This guy's a meth head. And yeah. he got away? Like, yeah. How does that... You let him... You let... With with 150000 to 210000 This other dollars story, worth. it was... Yeah. yeah, dollars worth of stuff. This last story was five grand in an envelope, and they didn't even let him get to the car. And this yeah. guy's like packing up his fucking trunk. Yeah. Like, that was the FBI, though. Yeah. This is like the county sheriff of some place in California, so I understand. But like, yeah, like, what? Did, <laughs> they gave him a second to tie his shoes. Yeah. yeah. They were like, all right, see you later, Do man. You need gas? Do you got smokes for the road, yeah. buddy? Uh, <laughs> Why isn't the place surrounded? It does. <laughs> or worse, it was. And they still just, this guy got away. Like, you know what, what I mean? What the fuck, dude? This is just. Yeah, I, I don't know how you just get away with this. Shoddy work. Yeah. I kind of I'm really interested in like spike strip or something. I want to see some security cam footage. Yeah. Of what went down. I want to see the bo- release the body cam footage. Let's yeah. see how this went down. I want to see it. Cuz I know you got them body cams on you, so let's see how this shit went down. But yeah, so Border Patrol has apparently reportedly seized 75,000 pounds of meth and counting in the first six months of this fiscal year 2023 so are they just taking like 60 pounds from that stash for mm. when they do these fake drug deals okay that's pretty cool so, that's pretty grand cool. scheme of the pounds of meth they, got, they didn't lose a out. whole lot so in order you know? to do undercover stings you first need to 
seize meth in other places to build up enough meth where you could do these stings. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Cool. So if you haven't seized any meth, it's a bad year. It's a down year. Yeah. Meth busts are low. <laughs> and you're trying to do a sting. Then they do it the other way. You pretend to want to buy the meth. And you uh, give them cash. Uh, and then they sell the you the meth. meth. Uh, but then if you have an, a surplus of meth, you sell the meth and then you get the guy trying to buy the meth. Okay. Okay. The Damn. cycle. Interesting. Supply and demand, it's, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Supply like, and demand. Works, farming. <laughs> works every time, man. <laughs> they got gotcha. you. I also like to point out this happened, uh, what was it, like a Tuesday at four o'clock? in the afternoon <laughs> like, no like way. how People, man like, that's rush hour you know that's what? rush hour it totally is wednesday 4 p.m god damn man that like, was the thing they stopped at the red light, light. <laughs> like, like he had no they had no disregard for traffic laws and then the cops are like waiting there like stop at the red light. blind spots <laughs> the cops get in for the fucking chase seat belts on check the mirrors all right start the car and we're I feel like that's why 60 like <laughs> come on that's why he got away with it because yeah, he knew exactly. beforehand it was a police thing what kind of drug dealer sets something up for 4 p.m on a Wednesday these cops are trying to get this done during their work day yeah <laughs> they waited right before they clocked out like I gotta squeeze this in I'm not fucking staying after work you so they, they didn't they didn't have to do papers or cycle tonight <laughs> they knew what was going down they're just gonna kill me if I miss another one yeah. like, <laughs> we'll do the paperwork tomorrow <laughs> yeah exactly exactly Exactly. <laughs> oh man, that's brutal, Damn. bro. Is that it? Is that so all we funny. got for news. <laughs> I think that's it, boys. Mm-hmm. That's it, man. So, uh, uh, yeah, wrapping things up, man. Stay tuned next week. We got a we got a big one coming. Probably the biggest one coming. Probably yeah. <laughs> it's definitely the most high profile person we're having on the show. Mm-hmm. I would say mm-hmm. for sure. Let us know if you respond to this episode like as it airs. Let us know if you have any questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, For this is gonna make that Freeman. a poll. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you have twenty four hours. Yeah. The ball's in your court. Mm-hmm. I, I, it wasn't a threat. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought we were gonna extort them for something, but no, never mind. We'll have a poll on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Or a question, Q&A on Spotify will make it. Like, yeah. what do you want us to ask next week? Any burning questions. questions you have for the new owners of Pornhub? Same on YouTube. Um, Phrasing. Yeah, you have until 7.59 Friday <laughs> night. So, there you go. What? I just, any burning questions, the phrasing of it was just jokes. Sex burning. Yeah. You, that's what you meant, right? Yeah, we, yeah. Had, a, we had our own moment. It's okay. Good. Speaking of burning pee, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs>